So our lead this hour coming from the Hoosier State. Don't bury the lead, my man. And that was the scene for the Monday night football extravaganza. As Justin Herbert leading the Charger traveling circus into Indianapolis, a date with Nick Foles and the Colts. Nick Foles taking over as the starter there. L.A. leading the way in the wild card race, needing a win here to secure a playoff berth. And they were favored on the road by a pretty decent margin. I don't know if you saw this game or not. Maybe you were doing something else and you missed it. Perhaps you were still hanging out with family. But don't worry. Uh, We have no lives. We watch, so you would not have to. So Austin Eckler, Austin Eckler, he's a running back. Uh, Eckler scored on uh, not one, but two one-yard touchdown runs. It's hard to say a one-yard run is a run, you know, because I could go one yard, and I can't really run, but I could go one yard. Uh, But Austin Eckler, uh, a couple of one-yard runs into the end zone, and the Chargers clinched their first playoff berth since way back in 2018. I was barely alive at that point. They intercepted Nick Foles, not once, not twice, but three times as the Charger defense disemboweling Indy 20-3 in the Monday night game. Justin Herbert, not a great game for him, 235 yards. Cameron Dicker, a man that I'm sure is a fan of Dick and Dayton who calls our show occasionally. Cameron Dicker, the kicker, made a couple of short field goals. The Chargers get their ninth win of the year. They've won three straight, and they got the help they needed over the weekend as the Raiders gagged the game away against Pittsburgh. Miami, Miami, Miami blew a game against the Packers. New England got smoked in the first half and then could not come back against the Bengals. And, well, you know what happened to the Jets as well over the holiday weekend. Don't ask. All right, so the Chargers, all they need to do is to win. They get that. They reach the postseason first time with the much ballyhooed Justin Herbert at quarterback and just the second time since 2014, way back in the old San Diego days. More on the bolts in a bit, but the better story is in the losing locker room, so that is where we go. All right, the question here is how do you grade Nick Foles' first start this season for Indy? So I've got Charlie Brown, Puppet, and Liberty. And we will combine all of these random things together, and we are going to make the foundation of this Maller monologue. So A, listen, Nick Foles reminded you and reminded me and everyone in the back of the room, in case you had forgotten, hey, he's a one-hit wonder. One of the great one-hit wonders of all time. Right up there with Joe Flacco. And he will always have what he did in Philadelphia. And Foles has been around so long. He's 33 years old, but he seems like he's in his (laughs) mid-50s. He looks like he's in his mid-50s, the way that he plays. And deservedly, the Super Bowl MVP against mighty Tom Brady and the big, bad New England Patriot dynasty. But outside of his happy place in the Delaware Valley, Nick Foles has been a zero around the NFL with all the other teams he's played for. And in this particular game, he was in the cockpit on a kamikaze mission on the Vomit Comet as he was not only a quarterback, he was terrible, completing uh, less than 60% of his passes, averaged less than five yards per attempt, sacked not once, not twice, not three, not four, not five, not six. How about seven times? Zero touchdowns. As you know, the Colts didn't score. It's hard to throw a touchdown pass. And three back-breaking interceptions. That works out to a passer rating of 31.9. And on the Maller report card, Nick Foles gets, and I'll be fair here, in F minus, 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 minus. So the passer rating of 31.9. This is a reminder that sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug. And uh, keep in mind, as we like to point out, the passer rating for Nick Foles would have been better, statistically speaking, if he had taken every single snap and dropped back to pass and thrown the Duke right into the ground. That equates to a 39.6 passer rating. So by throwing the ball, he was actually worse than if he had spiked it in the ground every time. Holy cannoli, was he horrific. Uh, And uh, another reminder that Nick Foles should be put out to pasture 
Uh, and the, uh, there's no excuse uh, for that. And uh, what are seven sacks? Blame the offensive line. Uh, that's the meathead sports fans' response. If you watch the game, you know many of those sacks were a direct, a direct result of holding the ball too long. And I don't care how much you hate fat people and want to fat shame the offensive line of the Indianapolis Colts. If Nick Foles, it's not his first barbecue. If he's going to hold on to the ball and take his sweet time and not know when to throw it away, and he's going to get sacked and you blame the offensive line. It's never the, 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 the pretty boy quarterback's fault. But watching Foles play quarterback was akin to Charlie Brown with Lucy holding the football for him to kick. And Nick Foles kept dropping back and getting suckered every time, thinking that he would be able to complete a pass. The offensive line would give him 20 seconds to throw the ball or thinking Lucy was going to hold the ball in place uh, for him to kick, only to have her pull it away at the very last minute. The Colts had 10, 10 third down opportunities. They went 0 for 10. Second time this year the Colts have pitched a goose egg on third down. One of four on fourth down. I can give you all kinds of stats if you want. They shouldn't give too many because it's a radio show, but they, they had one red zone trip after a, a turnover. Didn't get that, obviously, through the end zone and ended up finishing Indy with 10 first downs, but really only eight because two of the first downs were given to them via penalty by the Zebras on the Chargers. Now, turning the page on that, before kickoff, in the lead-up to this game, Jim Ursay a man that enjoys a good time, the owner of the Colts, uh, said that Coach Jeff Saturday is, quote, an outstanding candidate for full-time status as India's head coach. Now, is he being honest with that? Uh, is that an honest response by Jim Mercer? This was obviously before the game, but the answer is no. All right, no, 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 no. And I, I know Ursay's got a little Looney Tunes going with him, but he's in this story, he's a wooden puppet as in Pinocchio, right? That is an exaggeration and fabrication. It is a, a lie. It's a noble lie, but it's a lie. Nonetheless, uh, Jim Ursay loves Jeff Saturday, the man, and there's a bromance there, and it's a nice sentiment to think this guy's going to be the have a chance at the long-term job, but this has been a nice social experiment. It's weird science, and I'm all for it. I like the unorthodox think outside the box, and that's what the Colts did here. Let's put the hot take guy on TV, put him on the sidelines, and we'll see how it works out in a very primitive state. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. Saturday is, it's fair to say, not a connoisseur of coaching. You had the Week 13 game against the Cowboys where Indy was up 19-17 in Dallas going to the fourth quarter, only to be outscored 33 to nothing. And then, but wait, there's more. Week 15, there's something about that 33 number. The Colts were up 33 nothing over Minnesota, and we saw what happened in that game. 39-36, they lost. Greatest blown lead in NFL history. So Jim Irsay will search high and low, and here, and there, and everywhere for his new head coach. Now, we believe it is going to be the, the leading candidate is going to be Jim Harbaugh. That If Jim Harbaugh wants the gig, it's his. He's a Michigan man jonesing for a return to the NFL. He wanted the Viking job last year. He's already in the Colts ring of honor. It makes all the sense in the world. If Harbaugh turns it down, then it is wide open. And we know that Ursay is crazy like a potato. And I could see him going completely outside the box again and saying, well, Jeff, Saturday didn't work. So why don't I go back into my bag of tricks and let's see how Adam Schefter would do on the sidelines or Jay Glazer or Troy Aikman or Tony Romo. And at least we'll interview those guys and we'll see if any of them would, would like to be the head coach. All right, we'll, we'll go down the list. Now, the last word here. Are you impressed? Go to the other side. Are you impressed with the Chargers? They get a 20 to 3 win. Yeah, and I'm I'm shaking my head no on this. The Bolts were very beatable if they played a halfway decent opponent, a worthy opponent. That is a game they lose. They only had 17 first downs, barely 300 yards of offense, just 20 points. That despite being given 3 interceptions. The Chargers scored only 3 points off those Nick Foles turnovers. And Justin Herbert, and I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, I'm going to get into talk radio jail, but he was patchy under center. He was erratic. He was uneven. 
Now, my evidence on that. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had the wow, interception. bro. Right after Nick falls through one of his interceptions, Herbert came back and threw an interception of his own. And it's not the receiver's fault. Uh, but he was uneven. All right, this continues an uneven uh, performance here. And you're not supposed to say the quiet part out loud, but we'll say it. If he was an ice cream flavor, the flavor of the month here would be Rocky Road for Justin Herbert. It's lost in the shuffle. The stank is covered up by the sweet smell of victory. Justin Herbert living the life, La Vida Loca, because they keep winning, but he's the, the man who shot Liberty Valance when the legend becomes the fact he go with the legend. And we've seen the Chargers on national TV many times here recently. TV people love putting Justin Herbert on TV. They're hyping up the legend, building up the mythology of Herbert. And the Chargers are 3-1 and one over the last month. But in that stretch of games, Justin Herbert has just two touchdowns and three interceptions. He's been sacked 16 times and a passer rating below 90 over the last month for Justin Herbert. That is nothing to post about on social media. Now, the Chargers are a playoff team, so congratulations on that. As of now, uh, the, well, the good news is you're a playoff team. The bad news is you're in the AFC as the number six seed. The Chargers would open up the postseason if they started – this coming weekend with the number three seed, that's the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. And I'm sure the weather will be very nice there. And I, I imagine uh, Justin in Cincinnati, just Josh, and the other members of the Maller Militia in Cincinnati will be greeting the Chargers at the airport there, welcoming them uh, to uh, Southern Ohio for that particular matchup.